We Infuse Podcast, episode number 61. Welcome to the We Infuse Podcast. My name is Amanda Brummett. In every episode, we give you a seat at the table as we talk to Infusion Center owners, operators, and experts so that you can get the insight you need to run a thriving practice. In this episode, we talk with Canon Lowry, Chief Operating Officer of 12 Stone Health Partners. Canon shares how a culture of constant learning and adapting creates a sustainable business that will be around for many years to care for patients. Well, Canon, thank you so much for being on the show today. We're super happy to have you here. Good morning. Good to be with you. Yeah. So I know some of our guests already, or some of our listeners rather, already know you, but I would love for you to start at the beginning and tell us all about your background. Well, that's a lot to talk about. So I'll try to keep it short. <laughs> Uh, my name is Cannon Lauer. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of 12 Stone Health Partners. I've been with 12 Stone for 12 years. I uh, spent most of my career in banking, actually. I'm a third-generation banker. Uh, wow. So I uh, was Chief Information Officer at a large regional bank um, uh, towards the end of my banking career. I uh, left there in 08 and uh, went to Microsoft and uh, was at Microsoft for several years. And it's actually at Microsoft where I got into I didn't start out in the healthcare segment. I was on uh, the Nissan account uh, doing technology strategy uh, with their CIO uh, for Nissan Americas, uh, and then had an opening in healthcare. Of course, being here in Nashville, uh, Nashville is kind of the healthcare center uh, of uh, the United States and a lot of opportunity. So I thought that was a great uh, option to get into uh, such a uh, interesting industry. So that's where I got exposed to healthcare. I was working with our largest for-profit providers uh, in uh, at Microsoft, HCA, uh, CHS, LifePoint, Vanguard, helping them with technology strategy. Uh, and then uh, got four kids and uh, was kind of tired of traveling a lot. And uh, one of my good friends, Shane Reeves, who's our CEO, asked me if I'd come help them with technology at his company, which was Reeves Sane at the time. Uh, joined them in 2012 and uh, started growing. We're a multi-division company. We've got, we had retail pharmacy at the time. We had durable medical equipment. We had respiratory. We had enterals. We had home infusion. Uh, you know, since that time, we started a specialty pharmacy. We got out of several of those businesses. Uh, we started a infusion center division. We started a home health division. Uh, we got licensed in all 50 states for our specialty pharmacy and dual credit with URAC and ACHC and uh, brought in private equity in 2015, uh, divested the retail pharmacy. That's when we changed our name to 12 Stone Health Partners. So, uh, and now we've got, we'll have 20 centers in four states at the end of the, at the end of the year. So we've been busy over the past 12 years that I've been here, but it's been a lot of fun. Wow. That's incredible. Well, I have a couple more questions about you, and then I want to dive into 12 Stone in sure. some depth um, and love your background in Nashville. I'm HCA alumni here. So always okay. appreciate that. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of those in Nashville. Right. You know, there's an interesting, the Nashville Healthcare Council, I don't know if you've seen it, has a chart of all the different companies uh, that originated and kind of where they originated from. And it's amazing how many of those healthcare companies and healthcare technology companies in Nashville originated, you know, uh, from HCA. So oh, what a, what a, uh, what a great thing that's been for, uh, the national marketplace, but the United States as a whole, great organization. Yeah, fascinating. We'll have to go check that out. So let me ask you this. When you were making the, the decision about making that jump, um, what what made you decide to get in the infusion industry? What interest interested you about it? Um, well, you know, here at, uh, well, at Reeves Sane, when I joined Shane Reeves uh, back in 2012, like I was saying, we have multiple different divisions. I think in healthcare, there's constantly new things that are coming on the market. They plateau and then they fall off. So retail pharmacy was great for years. We've been, a, we had a retail pharmacy. Shane's dad started in 1980. Uh, but, you know, retail pharmacy is not where you want to be anymore. Durable medical equipment used to be great and you don't want to be in that anymore. We divested that. Respiratory used to be great. So, you know, the hot new thing now is infusion centers. And we started that division, and that's kind of our main growth area, especially pharmacy has been a good growth area for us. So, um, you know, really the way we got into infusion centers was one of our clients, Vanderbilt Medical Center, said, hey, we've got a lot of a lot of patients that we're infusing, but they don't want to drive all the way to downtown Nashville and fight the 
hour and a half to two hour traffic it takes to go that 32 miles. Uh, have y'all ever talk, thought of opening an infusion center? One of our sales reps came back and gave us this intel and we we're like, well, that's great. We, we've never done that before, but let's try it. So that's kind of how we got into uh, the infusion industry. So um, one of the things I like about 12 Stone is that I feel like we're constantly in startup mode um, and we're always starting new businesses, maintaining businesses and exiting businesses um, to stay kind of on that forefront of the healthcare wave. Yeah. So would you say that with your banking background, you sound like you're very strategic and very intentional about what you do. You know when to get in, you know when to get out. Would you say that's really your 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 area of expertise? I'm not a clinician, so I'll say that first of all. Uh, we've got a very talented uh, cl- chief clinical officer, Lee Golden, who we work very closely with, who I work very closely with. And, you know, uh, kind of our our theory or our strategy is, you know, you can you can go too much too far on the side of fiscal responsibility mm-hmm. and go out of business uh, mm-hmm. or you can go too far on the patient side and go out of business. Yeah. And Lee tends to lean towards patient and patient experience and patient service. I tend to lean more towards the operational fis- efficiency and fiscal responsibility and you know, we work very well together to kind of balance each other and kind of end up somewhere in the middle. Um, so, you know, I think really my area of expertise is is technology and software and operational efficiency. And that's a constant challenge when you have multiple divisions like we do. We run four pharmacy management systems across the company, which we're hoping our relationship with We Infuse will help eliminate some of those over time. And, um, you know, I think one of the main areas uh, that I've learned from my expertise of implementing software um, is uh, and I've learned this from my time at Microsoft and from my here, we've done several uh, software implementations during my 12 years here at uh, 12 Stone, is that uh, a lot of times the mistake companies will make when they try to bring in new software is that they will try to take existing processes and fit those into new software. And a lot of times that's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. Really what you need to do is when you choose new software, is to really rebuild and re-engineer that workflow process to fit the way the software was designed. That makes a ton of sense. And I love what you said about, you know, we can lean too far towards fiscal responsibility or too far towards patients. And either way, we're going to go out of business. We've got to have that balance. And that is such a good reminder um, for all of us as we're thinking through everything we do strategically, especially software. Um, Because if we don't stay in business, we're not going to be here to take care of all these patients that need us. That's right. Yeah. So let's get a little bit into 12 Stone and how you're set up. As I understand, you you partner with other providers, especially for post-acute care. Sounds like you guys are a little bit unique. Can you tell us about your model? Yeah. So uh, there's several things that I feel like make us unique um, here at 12 Stone. Uh, One of those is that uh, we believe that pharmacy has an important uh, purpose in these workflows that we've established. You know, I know a lot of the traditional We Infuse clients uh, are just started as medical provider based infusion centers and don't really have pharmacy involved in the process. Um, Of course, like I told you before, you know, Shane's a third generation pharmacist and uh, and believes heavily in the purpose of pharmacy in the care continuum. And so we've worked hard to include pharmacy in our infusion center division as we started it. Um, and I think that makes us unique. I think another thing that makes us unique is we have a medical provider-based entity, uh, 12 Stone Infusion Centers, that is a traditional buy and bill medical practice infusion center. But we also have a specialty pharmacy that I talked about earlier that's licensed in all 50 states, dual accredited with URAC and ACHC. And that gives us access to a lot of the specialty provider networks uh, that give us the ability to either buy and bill the drug or to provide drug from our specialty pharmacy and ship that into uh, one of our infusion centers, or ship it directly to one of the specialists uh, that we work with. 
Uh, we also have a home health division, so we have the ability to send nurses into the home uh, and uh, infuse that from our home infusion division as well, or from our specialty pharmacy. So I think that gives us maximum flexibility uh, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, our customer, uh, while the patient is a customer, our ultimate customer really is that specialist that is referring those uh, scripts to us, referring their patients to us, and trusting us to care for their patients the way that they do. Uh, and we need to give flexibility uh, to that provider to serve them in any way uh, they see works best for their patient. And then we also need to take great care of our mutual customer, which is the patient and their caregivers. Yeah, that's brilliant. I I love what you said about making pharmacy part of the process in the care continuum. Um, I think that we really, really, really miss out on a lot of brilliance and great patient care and such a good resource if, if pharmacy is an afterthought. Um, so I think that's a great way to set up your model on the front end. Um, really, really smart. And all of that flexibility and the ways you care for specialists and their customer and your customer, the patients, such a, such a good model. Um, wow. We could, we could talk all day. Just how, how, how does 12 stone do all that? Um, Excellent. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So I, I understand that you're also part of the infusion technology advisory council um, for we infuse. Can you tell us what that entails and what you do there and how you bring your software expertise into that? Absolutely. Yeah, I was really honored to get asked to serve on the ITAC. Uh, they've got a great group of uh, ITAC board members that have been asked to volunteer their time to help provide uh, industry expertise uh, to uh, make We Infuse better. Uh, and, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that I mentioned before is that we're currently using multiple pharmacy management systems across our divisions, and that creates challenges in training and, and flexibility for staff. And in a lot of areas, we've had to create dedicated teams for different divisions because it's just so difficult to be processing in multiple systems as you're trying to uh, efficiently operate on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, we would really like to eventually get uh, not only our infusion center division, which is currently migrating to We Infuse, we'd like to eventually get our specialty pharmacy and home infusion uh, div uh, divisions onto a similar platform. Uh, if And I know that one of the things that ITAC is working with We Infuse on is what is necessary to have for uh, a system to process uh, specialty pharmacy. Uh, fills and what is required uh, for a software to process home infusion uh, fills. And uh, of course, that's a, a big topic of discussion in the industry right now, because one of the major players, WellSky CPR Plus system, which we are currently on today, has announced end of life. Uh, so several customers like us are having to make decisions on what are we going to go to for the different divisions that are currently running on CPR Plus. So we're in the process of evaluating that for specialty pharmacy and for home infusion in the future. So uh, on the ITAC board, we provide our experiences and say, this is what's important to us. And this is the direction we feel like you should go in uh, to serve uh, infusion centers, especially pharmacies, home infusion pharmacies. Fantastic. Um, and just for our listeners that aren't super familiar with the specialty pharmacy side, any you, you mentioned some uniquenesses there in their technology needs. Any any big things you can point out there? Well, you know, the funny thing is in the industry, when you talk about specialty pharmacy, it's kind of a gray area. Everybody's got their own definition of specialty pharmacy. And really, it just ah. means really expensive drugs. Ah. But there's a lot of there's a lot of debate on what does expensive mean too. You know, sure. some people tell you it's over five hundred. Some people tell you it's over a thousand. You know, I, you know, there's no hard and fast. This is especially medication. And the interesting thing about that is, especially pharmacy is not that much different than retail pharmacy. Really, you're you're taping taking a product off the shelf. You're you're putting a label on it, and you're you're sending that uh, to you know the physician's practice or to the patient or. Uh, to one of our infusion centers. Um, the difference is that, you know, these are drugs that could be anywhere in the 50 to $300,000 a dose uh, medication. So 
it's really important that there be strong processes in the workflow uh, for those. Uh, and, you know, margins are pretty tight in that business as well, uh, you know, in the single digits. And so you just got to be very careful about the um, way in which you process specialty pharmacy. Um, and then, like I said before, there's some different regulations there, too, from the payers and being in networks for those, because, of course, they want to make sure uh, because of the cost and the importance uh, of those drugs that you have firm, good processes in place. Yeah, that makes sense. And that actually ties so well to what you talked about earlier on taking great care of the patients, but we also have to stay in business while we do it. Um, yes. So those patients right. with those yeah. critical needs, yeah, we've got to take care of that right. right. Um, so you have, it sounds like a ton of experience um, and we all run through challenges as we're, we're growing and learning. What would you say has been your biggest challenge so far in infusion practice? And if you can, maybe give us a sort of a behind the scenes look at that experience. Absolutely. I think um, our biggest challenge and. And of course, this is this is coming from a pharmacy uh, that got into medical provider-based infusion centers. Uh, so some of the uh, other customers that have historically been medical practices are a lot more versed in this than we are. But from a pharmacy standpoint, scheduling patients was a whole new world for us. That's not something we had to do as a home infusion pharmacy, as a retail pharmacy, uh, as a specialty pharmacy. You know, you're you're bringing in scripts, you're filling the scripts, and you're shipping them out. Um, when you start infusion centers, scheduling becomes critically important. Um, and it's a complex, um, it's much more complex than we probably thought it was going to be when we first started out. Because you are you have the aspect of you've got to ensure that your drug is there before the patient is there to be infused. Uh, you've got to make sure that you've got adequate authorizations in place. Uh, you've got to make sure that you've got chair space. You've got to make sure that you've got adequate time. You know, these infusions could be anywhere from 30 minutes to six hours. Uh, you've got to make sure that you have uh, an NP if it's required for billing. You've got to make sure that you have an RN there to, to work the chair. You can't start multiple patients at the same time that one nurse is working. You know, that nurse can only work. Uh, one patient at a time, um, and, uh, and then you get into other complexities. Like you got patients that like a room with a window. You got patients that like a room without a window. So I think as we you get cancellations, and when you cancel, you know a lot of these infusion appointments are you know they're infused once a week or once every other week or once every six months. So when you cancel one appointment, then you kind of have to cancel the whole series and reset the whole series and. You got to track why were they canceled and, you know, were they rescheduled? And so scheduling has become a really big, complex process and probably doctors offer. And, you know, you deal with people, not no shows and and people that have been in the medical practice for a long time are probably saying, yeah, that, no, no, duh. But that's something that's new to us, you know, and it's been a real challenge and you know, trying to find the right package. You know, when we first started using our software package, it didn't do scheduling very well. So we had to bring in a dedicated scheduling package. And that's one thing we're excited about with We Infuse is having the scheduling tied to the inventory and the orders in the pharmacy management system. Today, our scheduling product is separate from our pharmacy management system, uh, which creates some complexity there as well. But uh, yeah, really, that's been our biggest challenge. And I would say we hadn't uh, we haven't 100 percent solved that yet, yet either. We've been uh, historically we've done scheduling in the individual centers. We're working now to try to centralize scheduling to provide a more consistent experience and also give patients flexibility on you know which center they go to. Uh, we've started partnering with Lyft um, to work with patients that have challenges getting to their appointments. And so. Uh, yeah, that, that's been our biggest challenge. It's just something we didn't have experience with, and I don't think we fully appreciated the complexity, and uh, it's still a work in progress for us. Yeah, I, I suspect it is for many centers, um, because even when you've got a, a well-oiled process, to your point, you're still going to have no-shows, you're still going to have cancellations, and I love that you guys are utilizing software to help 
improve that and hopefully smooth that out. Keep us posted as you come up with more yeah. solutions there. <laughs> yeah. um, so what about light bulb moments? What, what have you learned along the way that, that you'd want to share with our listeners? Well, I think I alluded to this earlier in our model that gives us flexibility on both the medical buying and the specialty pharmacy side. Um, you know, I know a lot of our, our friends in the industry have started infusion centers just as part of their pharmacy. And then you've got other people that just started infusion centers as a medical provider based infusion center. And you got docs, doctor's offices that have their own uh, infusion area there within their own offices. Um, I think, you know, when we first started down this path, Lee and I and the rest of the executive team had never done this before. So we just kind of started doing it the best way possible. Um, and Reese and Brian uh, at We Infuse were instrumental in that. Uh, we actually were on We Infuse when we first started uh, the Infusion Center division, and, and they helped us get it started. And we made the decision to create a separate entity that was a, a medical provider-based infusion center. And uh, then we started to work on building that specialty pharmacy and getting licensed in all 50 states and dual accredited. And I think having that dual capability is somewhat unique. Uh, in the industry and gives us flexibility. So I don't know we fully realized uh, the benefits of doing that early on, but I think as we got into it, we're like, wow, okay, that that really is a model that works very well and gives us flexibility that others don't always have. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So it sounds like Throughout here, I kind of hear a theme of, of process optimization and maximizing an organization's efficiency and that um, you sound like you learn quickly and adapt as needed. Um, any specific tips in that realm for infusion center operators? Yeah, this is a hard question because this is definitely not something I think opt organizational efficiency is a constant battle and it's challenging and it's hard and we don't do it any better than anybody else does. I mean, it's just, it's really difficult. Um, one thing I will say, or two things that I'll say, however, that I do think benefits us is I'm a big believer in iterative steps. I think a lot of people, when they're making changes, try to get to a 100% solution uh, before they move forward. And I think a lot of times you don't know what you don't know. And until you start doing it, you really don't know. And so I'm a big believer in iterative steps. Let's get in there. Let's start doing it. Uh, let's fail fast and, and change things as we go versus trying to do everything right on the front end. And, you know, our infusion center division looks significantly different than it did back in 2016 when we first started it. Um, you know, we, uh, to my point, I'm trying to include pharmacy in the workflows. We actually put a hood in our very first infusion center. Uh, which is you know, what traditionally pharmacy would do, but that's not something traditional medical provider infusion centers do. They just mix on the counter. So, um, you know, there there were things we tried and we said, okay, well, that doesn't work great, so we'll try it this way. Uh, we've constantly refined our infusion center design and how we lay them out. Um, and so I think that's my biggest thing is just doing iterative steps and constantly evolving. Um, but again, something we're perfect at, um, you know, as we're going through this, we infuse migration. Like I said earlier, we're doing a full breakdown and re-engineering of the workflow. And uh, and I'm sure six months from now, 12 months, three years from now, it'll look different than this initial workflow we've decided to go with on, uh, on our first center that we put on the we infuse. Well, you said that was a hard question, but that was a great answer. It was both humble and um, it sounds like you guys have a culture where, um, you know, you said fail fast and then change. So where you guys are allowed to make mistakes and learn and adapt. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah. I'm, I'm we're, good at, we're good at making mistakes. <laughs> How, um, <laughs> when we correct them, you know, my grandfather <laughs> used to always tell me the only mistake you'll ever make is the one you don't correct. So Right. Right. And would you say that's throughout the organization? Does that, or does that stay within the C-suite? Is that? What's that? Uh, the, the, the permission to fail and oh, yeah, learn. Abso yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, our, uh, as we've evolved and gotten bigger, our director level is really instrumental. I mean, they're the ones who have designed the workflow and, 
how things work across the organization. So I think our, our whole team is, um, you know, we're always trying to do what is right for the patient. Um, and a lot of times that means being very flexible and kind of doing things on the fly to mm-hmm. make sure that we solve problems uh, and then try to learn from those and how do we improve the processes going forward. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, can you now tell our listeners what you're most excited about in this industry? And I'm going to add to that um, what you think is next. Yeah. One of the things I really like about the infusion center business versus maybe some of our more historical businesses is it's a much more intimate relationship uh, between our team and the patients because they're coming into our centers and uh, they're getting, uh, you know, touched by our staff. And, uh, you know, we're a big believer in healing's not just physical, it's spiritual as well. And we have a corporate chaplain on staff that calls every patient three days coming after coming on service to check on them and and offer prayer with those patients if they so choose. And, um, you know, that's very impactful to our patients and it's impactful to our staff. You know, in traditional pharmacy, you're somewhat removed because you're shipping that off into the home or, or, or shipping that to the patient. So that, that's been really rewarding. We've got some great video testimonials from some of our patients. Howard uh, is one of my favorites uh, uh, videos on our website and just really touching on what this impact of receiving this therapy from our infusion center has meant to him. Uh, you know, having our infusion centers outside of those urban areas closer to where the patients live provide great service for them. Um, and then you know, I think there's some amazing things happening uh, in with new drugs that are coming out, like Alzheimer's, uh, the new Alzheimer's drug that's coming out later this year. Um, and I, I think the sky's the limit for some of the things we're going to see in the next five, 10 years uh, that will be very impactful. You know, a lot of these patients we serve are chronically ill patients. There's no cure currently, but these drugs can have a significant impact on their quality of life. And that's very rewarding. That is a great approach um, that the healing isn't just physical. It's also spiritual. Um, It seems like that combined with some of these new treatments might actually be able to work ourselves out of jobs at some point, which would be a beautiful thing. It would be. (laughs) And then we'll all call you to see what's next. Yes. (laughs) So Cannon, if you had just one last piece of advice for our listeners, what would that be? Oof. Um, let's see. As far as infusion center business, I think I don't know if I can do it in just one thing. I think there there are three. You, you can have more things. than one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think there are three main things. If I were to go back and talk to me and Lee in 2016 when we were first working on the uh, starting the infusion center division, um, that we probably should have put more time and attention and focus on and not saying we do a horrible job at these things, but we probably could have done a better job over the past several years. You know, I think first of all is purchasing. Purchasing is so complex in this industry and so important. That's really the name of the game is how do you buy uh, in, in starting with that, that margin is so important on the front end. Uh, So we put a lot of time and attention and have a great dedicated purchasing team. Um, but, you know, we've learned through mistakes, uh, like we were talking about earlier there, on things we've done great and things we haven't done great and, uh, are really making a lot of um, movement there now. But that that's a key piece of this game. I think just maybe more important, but just as important than purchasing is the contracting. Uh, and that's challenging. And that's still an area where I feel like we're, down in the trenches, slugging it out. We probably should have put more time and attention on contracting. uh, And uh, we've got a dedicated team for that now. But, you know, uh, just as important as how well you purchase is how well you get paid for the work that you do. And that's all about having great contracts, having access to the contracts and constantly working to get better contracts. And uh, as I told you, a lot of times you have to go through those barriers to entry, like being licensed and 
uh, in all 50 states, like being dual accredited. And those are multi-year, uh, very expensive processes to get there. So um, we're continuing to work on that. And then I think finally just billing, you know, billing is very complex, especially when you're talking about, you know, what is the class of trade and, and are you going buy and bill? Are you going pharmacy and which one uh, makes the most sense, not just for us, but which one makes the most sense for the patient? And can they afford it? And, uh, dealing with free drug issues. So I think all three of those things have been major challenges that we probably didn't put enough time, attention, and resources on early on. And uh, we're really trying to get um, bond at this point. Well, I feel like you brought us full circle that in order to stay in business, we've got to do good purchasing, good contracting, and good billing so that we are all around to take care of these patients and deliver great care for them. Absolutely. Well, Cannon, thank you for your time. Thank you for the humble, introspective conversation about 12 Stone and and your career. And uh, we just appreciate you being here today. Great. I was pleased to be with you and pleased to share our experience. It's been a fun ride. Well, that was great information from Cannon Lowry of 12 Stone Health Partners. His humble approach to process improvement and optimization creates a culture of continuous learning and a center that takes great care of patients and referring providers. And if you aren't familiar with the We Infuse software platform and RX Toolkit's web-based resources, I hope after listening to Canon talk about software and how important it is, you'll schedule a test drive of these softwares. They can save you time and money in your practice while making infusions safer for patients and for caregivers. My name is Amanda Brummett, and we'll catch you in the next episode.